President and Vice-Chancellor, as public orator, may I present Sandip Baroness Verma, a candidate for an honorary degree. Sandip, or Sandy Verma, had a big ambition as a little girl. Inspired by the example of Indira Gandhi, she hoped to become Prime Minister of India. This This was a goal she was unlikely to achieve, since although she was born in Amritsar, she had lived in the UK from the age of nine months. This tells us two important things about her, which have been hallmarks of her adult life. She is never afraid to take on difficult challenges, and she is a role model and advocate for people seeking to break through barriers of gender and race. Success for a child of a new immigrant family in the 1960s was certainly not guaranteed. Sandy experienced her share of overt racism. She was the only one of only two non-white children at her Leicester school. And she was determined from an early age to stand up, to stand up for herself and for others facing discrimination. Her family was a loving environment in which aspiration was encouraged. Indeed, High academic achievement at school was demanded of her, and she and her mother hoped she might become a doctor. But the conservative cultural attitudes of her father meant that any such progress from school to university was out of the question. Frustrated in this, Sandy was married just before she was 18, but she is not the sort to settle for a traditional wife and mother role. By the age of 20, she had started her first business, taken out her first mortgage, and had the first of her two children. Throughout the 80s and 90s, she continued to be actively involved with her husband Ashok in the fashion business, expanding it from wholesale and distribution to manufacture and export of high fashion garments for the UK and European markets. More recently, she has brought her business skills to the adult social care sector, in 2000 setting up a company which provides support for people in their homes. In retrospect, our honorand regrets that she did not become actively involved in politics at an earlier stage. When she did make that move, it was typical of her that she took on tough challenges, standing for the Conservatives first in Hull East against John Prescott in the 2001 general election, and then in 2005 in Wolverhampton South West, the constituency held by Enoch Powell in the 1960s at the time of his notorious Rivers of Blood speech. In both places, she had to overcome prejudices relating to her color, her gender, and as a woman only five feet two inches in height, even her stature. Fortunately, Sandy's potential contribution both to Parliament and to government was recognised and in 2006 she became a life peer with the title of Baroness Verma of Leicester. She immediately assumed a front bench position as an opposition whip, then from 2010 a government whip, rising to ministerial rank from 2012 to 2016. Her responsibilities during this period were wide-ranging and influential, including health and welfare, international development and equalities. As a Minister for Energy and Climate Change and as a Minister for International Development, she was able to explore opportunities for renewable energy, both in the UK and through the development of social impact programmes in Africa. Since 2016, she has enjoyed a prominent non-ministerial role in the House of Lords as chairman of the Lords European External Affairs Committee and as a member of its select committee on the European Union. Her business experience has made her a firm believer in the benefits of EU membership. She has argued since the referendum for the maintenance of close relations with the EU and has occasionally parted company with her party in the division lobbies. Sandy Verma is liked and respected on both sides of the House, where colleagues know her to be a loyal supporter of this city and county. 
She actively assists the growth of business opportunities in our region, supporting trade missions, and has worked closely with the university in developing its business links to South Asia and East Africa, helping to generate social and economic improvement both locally and around the world. In 2015, Lady Verma received a prestigious Ellis Island Medal of Honor in the USA. This is usually awarded only to Americans and recognizes the contributions immigrants have made to that nation. She has for long been celebrated for her opposition to violence against women. David Cameron appointed her as the government's global champion to tackle violence against women and girls overseas. She believes that while there has been change for the better, abuse is still to be found, often in new forms, such as pressure of body image. Sandy has been an exemplar in drawing attention to all forms of injustice, discrimination and disadvantage, continually challenging barriers where they still exist. This is further reflected in her recent appointment as chair of the UN Women Committee for the UK that is, this country's arm of the United Nations organisation dedicated to gender equality and the empowerment of women. While conscious of the many ways in which this country still falls short, she is nevertheless quick to say that Britain is a wonderful country which has given her and others many opportunities to flourish. She may have accepted that she will never herself be Prime Minister, either of India or the UK, but she harbours a hope that she will live to see a person of colour occupying number 10 Downing Street. <laughs> Until the unveiling of the statue to suffragette Alice Hawkins in 2018, Lester had done little to celebrate publicly the contributions made by local women to the community and the cause of equality. The university can do its bit to adjust that balance by recognising the outstanding achievements of our honour round today. President and Vice-Chancellor, on the recommendation of the Senate and the Council, I present Sandip Verma that you may confer upon her the honorary degree of Doctor of Laws. President, Vice-Chancellor, Professor Kanaga Raja, Chair of Leicestershire County Council, Councillor Pam Posnett, Senior Officers of the University, ladies and gentlemen, first may I start by also congratulating you all on your wonderful achievements here today. We in Leicester are so proud of the graduates that come from Leicester University because you do go out there to change the world. And it is with enormous pride and gratitude that I receive this most distinguished honour. My family's history with Leicester goes back to the 1930s, when my maternal grandfather came to Leicester from India as a young man who had left his wife and two children, two daughters behind, to seek a better fortune for him and them. And I arrived in Leicester just before my first birthday in 1960 so you can figure out how old I am. My parents joining the small number of immigrant families from the Indian subcontinent to help rebuild Great Britain after World War II. This is a city that has made me the person I am. I am very ambitious still, even at the grand age of 60. Because one thing I was taught that you must never be short of ambition. And when I was growing up in the 60s and 70s, where racism and discrimination were rife, 
attitudes of course reflected at that period in history. It was amongst the communities that we decided to fight hard against those discriminations. We didn't let it come and overtake us. We stood together as citizens of this great city to ensure that it would not ruin the city that stands here before you today. This city was rebuilt with the heart of manufacturing at the heart of it all. And my grandfather in 1952 became the first from the Indian immigrant community to open up a wholesaling business in knitwear. It's hard to imagine the diversity now when he must have started then as a small group of immigrant families. Sadly, it is also not far from the city that the conception of the far-right movement, the National Front, also took birth. Having faced being called names of all sorts throughout my formative years, often being treated differently by teachers even, I believe all of these things, good, bad, indifferent, challenges, opportunities, all influenced the decisions I've taken in my life. I grew up knowing that I wasn't wanting to let the next generation endure what I had grown up in. And I'm pleased to say, looking at this wonderful hall of people today, that we are represented by people from across the world. Because whilst I couldn't go to university, and that time, to be quite frank, very few people did go to university, I'm so pleased to see so much of a reflection of the global world we are living in, sitting in this room here today. I became aware of injustices at a very young age. I went on my first march at the age of 13. I had high hopes to be Prime Minister at the age of 11. Unfortunately, when you're in the House of Lords, that's knocked out of you. But I will, I know I will, see a Prime Minister of Colour in my lifetime. Because I know that there are people here, sitting in this room, who will make sure that that takes place. I was the first woman of Asian origin to sit on the front benches in the Houses of Parliament. Just imagine, 2006, it took till then to get a woman of South Asian origin onto the front benches. But I had that opportunity because this great country gives you that opportunity. The greatness about this country and this city is this. It welcomes people who are wishing to contribute. It welcomes you and supports you in what you want to do. And you must never let anything stop you. The color of my skin has always, and will always, for a very long time still, I suspect, be a barrier. And the chair of Leicestershire County Council, Pamela, Councillor Pamela Posnett, knows she has been a dear friend of mine for many years, and she used to trail around me when I used to try to get selected for a parliamentary seat. Sadly, I can't and won't ever deride the colour of my skin. What I'm proud of is the fact that I have a history with a country that is now important in the world. And that country is Great Britain. And we will be the contributors of how that future plays out. None of us can do things on their own. We all have to have support mechanisms and each one of you would have been supported by your families and your friends. And I've had the same. I've been incredibly lucky. I've got a brilliant family, a family that has never, ever demanded that I be just a mother or just a wife or just a daughter. But a person who, in her own right, has ambition and aspiration even today. And I am extremely grateful to the person who donated the first land and money for the University of Leicester, Thomas Fielding Johnson, in 1921 because business people then understood the relationship between business and education. And we need to get back to those relationships again. And the other thing that higher education or education of any kind does is the great soft power it brings with it. And that soft power 
holds us all in good stead because soft power, which is sadly in short supply these days, soft power in the relationships you build up over the time you've been here and the time you will continue are lifelong. And I hope that you use that soft power to continue keeping a relationship with Leicester. And as the Vice Chancellor rightly said, it isn't just about your education. It is about what you will give to others and how you will help others also develop. <coughs> and Vice Chancellor, because my voice is about to disappear on me, I'm going to end by thanking my family, thanking you, but above all, thanking the University of Leicester for recognising me today. Thank you.